All right, suppose we've got a function here, uh, x squared minus 3x plus 2 over x squared minus 5x plus 4. And suppose we have a couple different graphs. So there's uh, two of them. I think we can squeeze. We'll squeeze the other one in here in just a second. Suppose we've kind of got, got three different graphs, and we want to figure out which one's correct. So um, notice they all have vertical asymptotes here at x equals 4, horizontal asymptotes of y equals 1. Um, you know, kind of the difference, I guess, uh, you know, here, this one's going down to negative infinity, uh, and, you know, so those two are a little more in common. Here, this one's obviously a little different. The x-intercepts are in different places. The y-intercepts are in different places. Um, so we want to figure out which one of these would be correct. And, you know, honestly, on these, you can do some calculus, but, you know, usually it's easier just to uh, do a few algebraic things. So notice if we factor this function, we would have x minus 1 times x minus 2 on top over, let's see, um, x minus 1 times, looks like x minus 4. Okay, so notice this, the domain will be all numbers. It'll be all numbers uh, except x equals 1 and x equals 4. So I think that would already even rule out our last graph because there's no holes uh, you know, this one's not undefined at x equals 1. It has an x-intercept. So um, that one can't be correct right off the bat. Um, let's see here. Notice if we plug 1 into the function, we get 0 over 0. And that would tell us that there's a hole in the graph there. If we plug 4 into the function, well, it looks like on top we would get 3 times 2, or I guess 6, over 0. And that's going to tell us, since it's non-zero over 0, it says that x equals 4, there's a vertical asymptote. All right, so both of our graphs did have a, a vertical asymptote here at x equals 4. Okay, so, so far so good. Notice they also both have uh, little holes here at x equals 1. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about, you know, it looks like they both have horizontal asymptotes too. So recall to get the horizontal asymptote. All we have to look at is the limit as x goes to positive infinity. So the limit as x goes to positive infinity and the limit as x goes to negative infinity. In both cases, though, we'll get the same thing because this is a rational function. So if it has a horizontal asymptote, um, there's only one. And we've seen this trick that if the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, we can just use the ratio of the coefficients. So here we would get 1 over 1, or 1. And the same thing if you do, uh, you know, when you look at it from negative infinity, or the limit as x goes to negative infinity. We'll still get positive 1. So it looked like both of our graphs here, uh, let's go ahead and label. Uh, both of those do have a nice little uh, y asymptote, or uh, excuse me, horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. Um, let's kind of figure out where the hole should be in the graph. And to figure out where the hole should be, we should just look at the limit as x approaches 1. So if we look at the limit as x approaches 1, again, we already had it factored a second ago. Um, we would have, again, if you try to plug it in, again, obviously it's just 0 over 0. But this is one where we can factor and cancel. And then if we plug 1 in, well, it looks like we would get 1 minus 2 on top, so that would be negative 1. Uh, 1 minus 4, that would be negative 3. It looks like the hole should be at the point uh, 1 comma 1 third. That's where the hole will be. And I think that's actually enough to narrow it down in this case because um, this could be 1 comma 1 third where the hole is. Since this is already the horizontal asymptote of y equals 1, here it says this, this hole is at a y coordinate larger than 1. So that can't be correct. So it looks like our first graph would be the correct graph. Of course, what you could also start doing is, you know, take the derivative of this function, x minus 2 over x minus 4, um, start thinking about critical points and regions of increase and decrease. But usually on these problems where they give you the graph, you know, I just do the algebra stuff and plot a few points, and that should certainly be enough to narrow it down.